Hello everyone, I'm back, and I told you that I will come back when I get inspired to come back. And um, yesterday was just me taking a quantum leap and, um, you know, letting the world know what I don't consent to, what I do consent to, and going naked, just going naked, taking off all those clothing from basically the 3D world as I'm starting to look for a new outfit as I'm emerging out of the matrix. And like I said, it's going to be a day-to-day -day process. But I know somewhere out there, there's someone like me, you know, that, you know, is emerging. And my God is telling me, you know, come, come out, speak, speak what you're going through. The same way I found someone to enlighten me to spark me you know we all know who that was prime minister he gave me the jumper cables you know he sparked that light back in me to start listening and 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 bringing guests on to give me tools to know how to get into that light you know what i'm saying and i've always had the tools they was in the toolbox i was just walking around with a bunch of tools in the toolbox right and not using those tools, but which I'm quite sure many of us, many of us, but he started helping me use those tools. And um, one of the first tools that I started using was every morning that I get up, when I put my feet on the floor, I say, dear Lord, do with me what is in your will. Allow me to know what my mission is here. What is my godly mission here? Right? Because all my life I was always against injustice. I was always I was always the fighter for the underdog. Always. I, that 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 just always was me. But when you in that 3D world, we're stuck with so many darknesses, even though we know the truth about it, you know, we just stuck carrying that toolkit and not using the tools, right? So now I'm using the tools. So yesterday was let go of ego, be naked. I did that. I took the quantum leap. I went live. I didn't care how I looked. I just, I didn't, it didn't matter. It just, God inspired me, and that's what I did. Today, I woke up with the sermon of righteousness and mercy. Righteousness and mercy. Okay, so what is righteousness? The righteousness is basically. Standing by morality with justifiable, that is justifiable. The morality of it is justifiable. What is mercy? When you have compassion and forgiveness for someone or something, even though you have the power to inflict harm or pain. Or goodness, right? Now, what is being merciful is the act of it. It's the act. So I'm like, okay, God, yesterday you, 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 you allowed me to just say, go naked. It's time for you to get a new outfit. And that new outfit must be filled with love and light, humanity, things that you know is right. You can no longer stand by, you know, and, and, and just allow things to go on and don't say nothing. Like, you know, I'm against pedophilia. I'm against trafficking. I'm against, you know, the exploitation of children because I firmly believe that children are our existence. We all were kids once. We all were kids, you know? And sometimes when I think about those acts and those things, it get me so angry. And the anger just puts me in such a chaos where sometimes I can't release good frequencies because those energies then had me so, ugh, right? So, God, what you saying to me about righteousness and mercy? Righteousness is you know what is right, okay? Now mercy. Say yes, you have to have mercy for the good and the bad. Mercy for the good and bad. All right, here we go. So I go through the day. Then I sit down again and I just start thinking, meditating. And he goes, now I'm explaining it to you in the way I interpret it in my download. He said, my only begotten son gave his life for humanity. Correct? Yeah, right, he did. 
But even in the final hours of him laying on that cross, he still asked for mercy, even for those who he was trying to save that were part of the affliction of him being put on that cross. You know, whether they did it out of shame, fear, or because they are part of that darkness, he still asked the Creator to have mercy on them. So, in that note to me, it's like, wow, you know, God have mercy on me. Especially when I was living in darkness, darkness, and sometimes my actions were done out of darkness. He still kept his hand on me and had mercy on me so that I can go down the road and meet someone like Prime Minister, who is will always be my minister, my general. Salute to him, always. You get me? So he always had mercy on me. So then I started thinking about when... um. Jennifer made a statement about in the movie Sounds of Freedom how one of the guys who was down with, you know, the exploiting of these children, like he turned around and started helping out. Wow, he turned around and started helping out. Somewhere in the line, God had mercy on him so that he can make a change. Get me? A change to try to help the situation. You know, so like I'm starting to see mercy is to give you a little more calmness in your body because even though we know what is righteous, we must continue to what is right, but we can't allow that to let dark frequencies run through us. We have to heal. And in order to heal, we have to have some mercy for the darkness, mercy that, yo, if this the way you going, I have mercy on you because I know where that's going to lead you to. I know what your conviction is going to be. I know what your judgment is going to be. And I don't wish that on nobody. And I continue to have the mercy for the people who are suffering. And I continue to ask for mercy. And each day that I put these tools in motion, my meditation, giving myself to God, I'm naked, I want a new outfit, I want to wave from that darkness. If it don't have nothing to do with love, light, humanity, I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to be a part of it. I just want to know, discernment, how do I help change that? How do I help, you know, rid this darkness? Because it's ugly. It's very ugly. Like I said, it has bolts, screws, doors, all type of things to this matrix. You know, matrix is a trick. It's an illusion. And we do need tools. Even though some people are a little more emerged than us, you know, but every day is an emerging because time is infinite. You keep learning, you keep growing. And in that learning and growing and that ascending and in that emerging, you can't let ego get the best of you. So you always have to remember, let that ego go and always walk as if you're naked. And that, that that's what's working for me. That's what's starting to work for me. I only can say what's working for me because I know somewhere out there, someone sees me and them the way I seen someone else in me to help set me free. You know? And it's just the everyday process, but we must use the tools. We must the tools use the tools with our righteousness and always stay firm to what you know. Like what is it you do know? What do you know that is fact? What do you know that is 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 morally correct? What do you know that is justifiable? Because the devil will come in and play with our egos, play with what we know, you know, and try to bring that darkness on you. So in me learning mercy, I'm going to pray for the dark. I'm going to pray for the light. I pray that the dark, if it, from today, yesterday on, isn't confronted, I'm confronted by the darkness, that through me, God can show them who he is through me. Use me as the vessel. Use me. I'm useful. Use me. Use me. Show them that there is love and then that there is light to come out of that darkness. For whatever reason, they choose to be in it, whether willfully or non-willfully, because a lot of us done seen the Matrix, our friends, our families, they done seen the Matrix a thousand times. They could tell you a word for word for freedom for freedom. And it says... Blue pill or red pill? And there's still a lot of people taking the red pill. So 
I'm like, hold on. They got to really be tied up into some darkness or they are part of the dark program. They know what they're doing and that's what they are. So I still have to ask God for mercy on them, to have mercy, to pray for them because me having mercy is also letting go of some of that dark ego that tries to creep inside of me because like I said I've, I've always been against injustice like I don't stand tall but I'm going to be I'm going to fight for what's right you know what I'm saying but now I'm using the tools even more like I said my morning affirmations my meditations trying to eat a little better drink more water just trying to use all those tools you know hey all those tools in the best way that I can because I know that it's going to get me where I need to go it's going to get me where I feel more free it's going to get me where I feel more happy where I can be useful in, in, in the light you know so today for me it was righteousness and mercy Yesterday it was let go of ego, go naked. So I take day one and I put it with day two. Let go of ego, get naked, get you a whole new outfit. Outfit full of love, light, humanity, and try to lead it by righteousness and mercy. So to all you out there, like I said, this is not about me becoming a YouTuber. This is not about none of that. It's about God is really, really like, he's really, he's really weighing on me. He's putting me through a test, whatever test. I don't know what it is, but I know I'm going to follow his plan and I'm going to try to rise the occasion because when I was in that darkness, I didn't have a problem with raising to that plan. No, I didn't. So, I'm going to come on here whenever I'm inspired because this is the time for us to heal. This is the time for us to, we have to emerge. We have to. And everybody needs somebody. Two is better than one because if one fails, the other one can pick them up. Like Prime said, if one patriot falls down, pick them up. Pick them up. And we have to be valiant. We have to know what we stand for. And we can no longer fear the darkness when we know that something is not right. It's just not right. Don't feel right in your mind. Don't feel right in your body. Don't feel right in your soul. Just don't feel right. And if God, in my 50 years of life, because yes, I'm 50. I'm 50. I'm from New York. I live in Manhattan, born and raised in Harlem. If God have not put any other fight in front of me to fight for, this is the best fight that I ever in my life could say I fought for. You know, they, I'm a firm believer that life and death, come, with life comes death. Those are the only two things that, you know, we're guaranteed. That's, you know. So what I'm going to do in between that? He gave me breath. He gave me energy. He gave me knowledge. He's given me tools. I can't keep sitting like some old car in the garage just sitting there. I can't. Not when someone came along and jumped my cables. Boop, and then somebody else came along and showed me that there is something inside. There is something inside of you. And what's inside of me is for truth honesty, love, loyalty, humanity. And day by day, I'm going to stick with that. And a shout out to all the patriots. Shout out to all those who are trying to live in the love and light. Shout out to all the truth seekers who are trying to put the truth out there. Just shout out to you. And my prayers go out to you. God gives you the strength because... I no longer ask God, oh God, don't give me problems. Don't give me no problems. No, I know what I know. Life comes with problems. So now I ask God, give me the strength to find the equation to get through those problems. And I'd rather ride 
on the storm, at least I could try to point it in the right direction than to continue to ride in the storm where I can't see shit. I'm just, oh, God. Oh, yeah. No, I'm stronger than that. I'm God's child. And we all God's child. Love, light, peace to humanity. And trust me, God wins. He always keeps his promises.